First of all, I'd like to thank the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Hall of Fame Committee for this honor. A special thank you to Jacqueline for all the behind scenes work that you have done. You have done such an amazing job and the emails that went back and forth, you just are amazing. So thank you so much for that. Wow, uh, the video was absolutely amazing. JB, thank you for your kind words. What a touching tribute. I would also like to congratulate the other inductees. I have thoroughly enjoyed learning your stories and hearing your testimonies. This is an amazing group to be a part of. Oh, what a beautiful week it has been. It started off on Sunday watching the U.S. women win their fourth World Cup. <laughs> yes. For the past month, I have watched these women represent our country and battle through obstacles both on and off the field. As the tournament progressed, I was able to relive many of the memorable moments that I encountered through this amazing sport. While I am so incredibly grateful to have been able to play this sport at such a high level and in such a competitive athletic conference, for me, all of this hard work and dedication talk really was nothing more than love, pure, unconditional love. Love for a ball, love for a game, a love for competition, a love for the players playing beside me, love for coaches, love for fans. For nearly two decades of my life, soccer was my soulmate. We had a beautiful marriage, and I'm truly humbled to accept such a prestigious and honorable award because in the end, my career was always about love. And that's what tonight is about, love and gratitude. Throughout the years, I've had many fantastic coaches, but there have been three that have been able to provide the support and nurture that I've needed, while always avoiding complacency. Rick Charlesworth, the Australian men's hockey coach, he said, the interesting thing about coaching is that you have to trouble the comfortable and comfort the troubled. Did you get that? You have to trouble the comfortable and comfort the trouble. And this is exactly what they did. The first was my high school coach, Karen Honeycutt. She took me under her wing the first day of high school soccer. I had just moved to Plano, Texas from Canada. I had a horrible attitude. I didn't want anything to do with Plano. I didn't try to make friends or fit in. But Coach Honeycutt helped me make that transition into high school in my new life. Both on and off the field, she stepped in when I was most vulnerable, guided me during all of those difficult trials, and gave me a reason to live and smile again. Both Karen and her husband, Eric, were stable anchors in my life. And without their kindness and support and encouragement, I really am not sure where I would be today. Karen, from all the US cities to move to from Canada, from all the Plano schools to choose to attend, it is not a coincidence coincidence that you and I ended up in the same place. It was a God thing. You have been one of the most beautiful blessings in my life. I love you immensely and know that you not only changed my life, but you saved it as well. You comforted the troubled, and this is one reason why I am here tonight. I'm forever grateful for all you have done, and I'm blessed to be able to call you friend. The second coach who forever changed my life was my Dallas Texans club coach, Hassan. <laughs> We had a bit of a complicated love-hate relationship, but this man transformed me into the player I was. He taught me how to play. He developed the technical and the tactical career that carried me throughout college. Soccer was not always fun with Hassan, and he pushed me harder than I had ever been pushed before, but he is the biggest reason I'm here. Hassan, thank you for your tough love. Thank you for developing the skill and knowledge I needed to excel in the game. Thank you for never accepting complacency. Thank you for troubling the comfortable. You have developed so many talented soccer players from Dallas, and I am blessed to be a part of that group. The last coach I need to thank tonight is JB. As a high school senior, and I've told you this before, my top two choices were Regis and Creighton. I loved both schools, I loved both soccer programs, but in the end, the difference was JB. A couple of years ago, Kristen Geyer, who's sitting back there, in her RMAC Hall of Fame speech said that you made her feel like a person and not another number. This is the exact same feeling I experienced on my recruiting trip, and that's why making 
uh, I'm sorry, and that's why choosing Regis was an easy decision. As an incoming freshman, I was programmed to Hassan's regiment of playing the way you were facing, giving only one touch balls and making certain runs at certain times. It took a while for me to relax and settle in. JB, I still very clearly remember you telling me to turn and dribble towards the goal. You encouraged me to take on those defenders, to take the risks. You brought back the joy and spontaneity of soccer. You allowed me to be free and to express myself through soccer. And my last year as a Ranger was all about that freedom of expression. That joy and love for the game was back and stronger than ever. That, and that was because of you. Thank you for allowing me to be creative. Thank you for encouraging me to solve the puzzle. Thank you for investing time in me and pushing me to be better both on and off the field. Thank you for being a combination of both Karen and Hassan and knowing when I needed to be troubled and when I needed to be comforted. Thank you for being you. One of the crucial elements in soccer is friendship. Without that bond, it is incredibly difficult to build the level of trust needed to be highly successful. While I've been blessed to play on numerous teams where the bond of friendship has lasted and is inseparable, my Regis sisters are perhaps the most influential teammates that have ever touched my life. It is so difficult to put into words how connected we were and still are. Back in college, we, and I'm not talking about four or five of us, but rather 20 of us, would do nearly everything together. After road trips, which included being together 24 hours a day for four days at a time, we would quickly drop our stuff off at our houses and go somewhere and meet up again. <laughs> the shenanigans we pulled were usually wrapped up with inappropriateness and immaturity, which is why I cannot share any of them with you tonight. But we definitely knew how to have fun. Good, clean fun. Safe fun, always. We were a family. And every single person was valued and loved, regardless of skill level or playing time. Everyone had a role. Kristen Geyer, as I said, who was inducted in 2017, I found her speech to be very interesting when I went back and looked at it. And while I don't want to take anything away from Geyer's individual talent, because she truly was an amazing athlete, I think it is crucial to identify a common thread in both of our inductions. It's our teammates. First of all, Geyer and I played together for three years. Now, unfortunately, in those three years, we were never healthy at the same time, which is one of my biggest regrets. JB, I bet yours too. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. My point is that during our years, for the majority of the time, we played with the same people. And it was this core group of girls who were so vital in our successes. Between the two of us, Geyer and I had a total of 119 goals. But in order to achieve this feat, we needed 119 assists from our teammates. We were also a part of a 2004 team that currently still holds the single season record for wins. Again, our teammates. And our three berths to the NCAA tournament could not have been accomplished without the strong, talented teammates in an overall collaborative team effort. I'm echoing Kristen Geyer when I say that I would not be here without your love, your support, and your encouragement, both on and off the field. Once again, ladies, and for a second time, we are all inductees. Speaking of, I am honored to have the presence of, I think, 10 of you guys here with me tonight. So if you guys could please stand up. We have two in the back, but the other girls stand up. Come on. <laughs> At this table back here, there's an empty seat. And while no one has physically occupied it tonight, it belongs to someone we all carry in our hearts. Jardine. Katie, you are a big part of my success. With your domineering presence in the midfield, I always knew you could feed me the perfect ball. You are greatly missed by all of us, but we have great faith in knowing that one day we will see you again. Aside from my coaches and teammates, there are two behind-the-scenes people 
that deserve to be recognized for their selfless acts of love, my mom and my dad. My parents were only able to see a handful of my Regis games, but they have always and will always be my greatest fans. So much of this award is because of the love, encouragement, and support my parents gave me throughout my life and during my soccer career. My dad was my first coach. And I don't remember much from my days as a Gumby, but I do remember playing soccer with him daily. Uh, as my love and obsession for soccer grew, my dad always provided what I needed for me to be my, at my best. When I was eight or nine years old, he built me, in his own words, an eight-foot indestructible wall in our backyard. He always said that wall was for me to practice on and to get better at kicking, but now I just think he was tired of replacing broken windows and mending fences. In the end, and whatever its true purpose was, that wall was definitely a win-win situation for all. My mom took on another role. She was my nurse, my therapist, my cook, my manager, my driver. Side note, she always made sure to drive at least five miles below speed limit, which only delayed our estimated time of arrival every trip. From pre-game meals to massages after the game to booking airfare, it always fell on my mom's shoulders. My mom never pushed me to be better. She supported every decision I made regarding soccer. And when I was in high school and trying to figure out if I even wanted to play in college, my mom was always there to listen. Patience is a virtue, and my parents have definitely had years of practice with me. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for giving up your lives in order to allow me to follow my dreams. Thank you for driving me all over North America, from Orlando to Vancouver, just to play the game that I loved. Thank you for bearing the weather in all extremes, just to watch me play. Thank you for being just as proud of me, regardless of whether I scored three goals or zero. I'm so incredibly blessed to have you two as parents, and this night wouldn't be possible without your love and support. I love you, Mom and Dad. Finally, I need to thank God for blessing me with a, this talent. Everything I am and all that I have been able to accomplish has come directly from him, and I am so blessed to be able to glorify him through soccer. Once again, thank you, for, uh, thank you to the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference for this honor. And in the infamous modified words of our former manager, Cat Beagles, that wasn't even my best speech.